I've come to make an announcement. Sonic the Hedgehog is known for having very bizarre and sometimes unexplained plot points. Sonic's age, Princess Elise not crying for 10 years after her father's death, Charmy B's brain damage, the Phantom Ruby, the name of Sonic's planet, and so many more. However, there is one plot point that has been completely ignored and unexplained for over 20 years that should affect nearly every single Sonic game under the sun that release after it, but it simply doesn't. This is the story of a plot point so devastating, so jaw-dropping, and so twisted that it shook the Sonic community to its core. The Moon. No, this isn't a joke. That's next month. The Moon. Not only is there one in our reality, but there's also one in the world of the Sonic. The Moon has been there since the very beginning in the 8-bit version of Sonic the Hedgehog, and has shown up in the latest release, Sonic Frontiers. However, if you look in the middle of it all, you should come to find that the lore of the moon from Sonic the Hedgehog is more confusing than trying to comprehend what's going on in Revelations. So, today, let's discuss the moon from the Sonic universe, or as its friends call it, the worst Sonic the Hedgehog plot point. Let's start at the beginning of the end. In Sonic Adventure 2, Dr. Robotnik, who's recently begun to use the moniker Dr. Eggman, has gained access to his grandfather's space station, the Space Colony Arc. He plans to use its Eclipse Cannon to destroy the planet, and to show its power to the public, he uses the cannon on the moon, destroying it and leaving it in half. Of course, Sonic stops the Eclipse Cannon from firing on the planet and later makes a truce with Shadow to stop the Arc itself from crashing into the planet, but that doesn't change the fact that the moon is still in half. Now, Sonic Adventure 2 was assumed by both fans and developers to be the final Sonic game, as Sega's last console, the Dreamcast, was no longer being supported and the company was about to enter bankruptcy. However, after Sega's chairman, Iso Okawa, gave the company over half a billion dollars just before his death, Sega was able to survive and become a third-party studio. Thus, the Sonic series was able to continue on other platforms. And apparently the moon was too. In Sonic Advance, the first Sonic game on a Nintendo system, when you get all seven Chaos Emeralds as every single character and make Sam procrastinates look like a two-year-old playing Dark Souls, the final fight takes place on the moon, and it's shown to be fully intact in a later cutscene. Although you could easily say that this game takes place before Adventure 2, and the game only released a few months after Adventure 2, so the developers may not have known that the moon was going to be blown up by the time that the game was finished, and when they saw it, they got really, really angry at their televisions. But the moon's problems don't end there, because the next sighting of the moon is not only in a game that takes place after Adventure 2, but a good game at that. In the first multi-platform Sonic game, Sonic Heroes, the moon can be spotted in Hang Castle Zone fully intact. Again. Considering the overall aesthetic of Hang Castle, this could easily be brushed off as some kind of fake moon made by the haunted house or something, and that's how I'm gonna label it as for now. After Sonic Heroes dropped, an episode of Sonic X actually went into detail about our favorite cheese-flavored sphere. After Eggman blew up the moon, he apologized to the public by creating a robot half of the moon to not be able to have this embarrassing gap in it, and also maybe fix the tides, dubbing it the Egg Moon. However, this mechanical half is actually controlling the moon in order to maintain a solar eclipse and get rich off the station square citizens by selling them artificial sunlight bolts, as well as using a signal being sent to the moon to convert the citizens to Eggman's side so we can create the Eggman Empire with minimal resistance. Eventually, Knuckles destroys the Eggman's receiver, allowing the moon to continue in its natural orbit. Now, this is great, isn't it? We finally have an explanation for the moon, right? Well, the problem is, is that Sonic X doesn't take place in the game timeline. It clearly takes place in an alternate reality. In the game timeline, the moon is still destroyed. So, what are the game fans left with? Insults. A game known for its abundance of guns, swearing, and the death of a 12-year-old and a 15-year-old, Shadow the Hedgehog opens up with the titular character walking towards the edge of a cliff with a full moon behind him. No gaping hole, no robot half, just a full moon. Here, it makes absolutely zero sense for the moon to be fully intact. We can't just make the Hang Castle argument, since this is clearly not a stylized haunted house, and the game is a direct continuation of the story from Sonic Adventure 2, even taking place in the same city from that game. I don't believe the moon appears that much for the rest of the game, maybe once or twice, but not many times. You could have easily just had Shadow be placed somewhere else in this shot and not have to worry about people being confused about the moon. Even so, just having the moon in half in the shot would honestly make Shadow look pretty cool. But no, being consistent, go ahead. However, they finally got their act together with the next game in the series, Sonic the Hedgehog, or Sonic 06, where the moon is finally shown to be in half. Just kidding, this is the fan-made remake of the game. The actual game has the full moon being showcased front and center at the very end of the game as a final middle finger to all the suffering you had to go through. 
Sonic Unleashed's main mechanic revolves around the moon. In Sonic Colors, Dr. Eggman creates a mind control ray that he plans to use on the inhabitants of Earth. <laughs> Mobius. <laughs> the Sonic Planet. Pluto. When he fires the ray, it malfunctions because of an arm being stuck inside the machine from the first zone, and the rays fly all across space, with one of them hitting a full moon. Awesome. It was after Sonic Colors release that the head of Sonic Team, Takashi Izuka, was asked about the moon at the same event where Naito Oshima confirmed that Amy was Sonic's girlfriend. <laughs> Aaron Weber asked Izuka on stage, In Sonic Adventure 2, Eggman blows up half of the moon. In the next game, Sonic Advance, the moon is whole again, and the final battle takes place on the moon. So they want to know, when did the moon get repaired? And what does Izuka say in response? From the planet, you're looking at the side that isn't broken. Like, you go to the other side and that's all. It's still blown up to this day. What? Now, this on paper sounds like an acceptable answer. Eggman just blew up the part of the moon that isn't visible on Pluto. Okay, cool. Except when you remember that the broken side of the moon was clearly visible on the planet in Sonic Adventure 2, so this answer doesn't really hold any weight. The moon doesn't just turn on its own, it orbits the sun just as Pluto does. We don't see the other side of the moon, we only see one side of the moon, and that side of the moon we see in Sonic Adventure 2 is broken in half. Now, did the future games ever address this statement? No, of course not. This is the Sonic series. We just got our first good mainline game in 12 years. The next and latest game to feature the moon is Sonic Frontiers. This game is all about fixing past continuity mistakes. Having Knuckles finally be fully connected with his ancestors, Tails' inconsistencies from the 2010 Sonic games finally being resolved, the Chaos Emeralds get an actual origin story, even Tangle the Lemur is mentioned, making her and her stories from the IDW comics canon to the game timeline. <laughs> so, of course, they'd have to do something with the moon. So what do they do? Well, every island has a day-night cycle, giving a more authentic feel to them. And who else shows up but our good friend, the moon? I'm not even mad anymore. I'm just disappointed. And even in the final battle against the end, the moon can be seen in the background fully intact. See? There it is. And that, as of now, brings the moon's story to a close. Similar to when I discussed Sonic's age, we have to ask, does this even matter? Honestly... Yes, this matters. Look, Sonic's age is one thing. You could just say that the manuals are wrong and this whole time Sonic was in his twilight years. But the moon? The moon? We saw it blow into pieces! The people of Pluto saw it blow into pieces! If the broken side of the moon was always facing from the other side of the planet, how would they know that Eggman blew up the moon, Izuka? Why is the moon like this in the game that literally follows up the game where it blew up? This is like if my friend told me that they had scoliosis, but the next time I saw them, their spine looked perfectly fine, and they said that the messed up parts were just on the part of the spine that isn't facing the back. I should stop while I'm ahead.